In mathematics, a self-adjoint operator or Hermitian operator on a finite dimensional complex vector space V within a product display style Langle CDOT CDOT Wrangle is a linear mapper from V to itself that is its own adjoint A V W equals V A W display style Langle av W Wrangle equals Langle V or Wrangle for all vectors V and W if V is finite dimensional with a given orthonormal basis, this is equivalent to the condition that the matrix of A is a Hermitian matrix, i.e., equal to its conjugate transposer. By the finite dimensional spectral theorem, V has an orthonormal basis such that the matrix of a relative to this basis is a diagonal matrix with entries in the real numbers. In this article, we consider generalizations of this concept to operators on Hilbert spaces of arbitrary dimension. Self-adjoint operators are used in functional analysis and quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics their importance lies in the Dirac von Neumann formulation of quantum mechanics, in which physical observables such as position, momentum, angular momentum and spin are represented by self-adjoint operators on a Hilbert space. Of particular significance is the Hamiltonian operator h hat h defined by h caret psi equals minus 2 2 m 2 psi plus v psi Display style hat h psi equals frac h bar caret 2 2 meters nabla caret 2 psi plus v psi which as an observable corresponds to the total energy of a particle of mass m in a real potential field V differential operators are an important class of unbounded operators. The structure of self-adjoint operators on infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces essentially resembles the finite dimensional case. That is to say, operators are self-adjoint if and only if they are unitarily equivalent to real valued multiplication operators. With suitable modifications, this result can be extended to possibly unbounded operators on infinite dimensional spaces. Since an everywhere defined self-adjoint operator is necessarily bounded, one needs be more attentive to the domain issue in the unbounded case. This is explained below in more detail. Topic: <laughs> Bounded self-adjoint operators. Suppose a display style a is a bounded linear operator from a Hilbert space H to itself. Then there is a unique bounded operator a display style a caret asterisk called the adjoint of a display style a such that in bracket notation a x y equals x a y display style langle x y wrangle equals left langle x a caret asterisk y right wrangle for all x y display style x y in h we say that a is self adjoint physicists use the term hermitian if a equals display style a caret asterisk equals a equivalently a bounded operator a is self adjoint if a x y equals x a y display style langle x y wrangle equals langle x a wrangle for all x and y in h Topic. Symmetric operators Topic. Subtleties of the unbounded case 
In many applications, we are led to consider operators that are unbounded. Examples include the position, momentum, and Hamiltonian operators in quantum mechanics, as well as many differential operators. In the unbounded case, there are a number of subtle technical issues that have to be dealt with. In particular, there is a crucial distinction between operators that are merely symmetric, defined in this section, and those that are self-adjoint defined in the next section. In the case of differential operators defined on bounded domains, these technical issues have to do with making an appropriate choice of boundary conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Definition of a symmetric operator We now consider an unbounded operator A on a Hilbert space H. This means A is a linear map from a subspace of H, the domain of A, denoted Dom A display style operator named Dom A to H itself. We typically assume that Dom A display style operator named Dom A is a dense subspace of H. Such an operator is called symmetric if, in bracket notation, A X Y equals X A Y display style Langle X Y wrangle equals Langle X A wrangle for all elements X and Y in the domain of A if A is symmetric and D O M A equals H Display style mathrum dom a equals h. Then a is necessarily bounded. That is to say, an unbounded symmetric operator cannot be defined on the whole Hilbert space. Since the operators considered in quantum mechanics are unbounded, it is impossible to define them as symmetric operators on the whole Hilbert space. In the physics literature, the term Hermitian is used in place of the term symmetric. It should be noted, however, that the physics literature generally glosses over the distinction between operators that are merely symmetric and operators that are actually self-adjoint, as defined in the next section. Although the notion of a symmetric operator is easy to understand, it is not the right notion in the general unbounded case. Specifically, the spectral theorem applies only to operators that are self-adjoint, defined in the next section, and not to most operators that are merely symmetric. In particular, although the eigenvalues of a symmetric operator are necessarily real, a symmetric operator need not have any eigenvectors, let alone an orthonormal basis of them. More generally, a partially defined linear operator from a topological vector space E into its continuous dual space E is said to be symmetric if A x y equals x A y Display style Langle x y wrangle equals Langle x a wrangle. For all elements x and y in the domain of A, this usage is fairly standard in the functional analysis literature. Topic: A simple example. As noted above, the spectral theorem applies only to self-adjoint operators and not in general to symmetric operators. Nevertheless, we can at this point give a simple example of a symmetric operator that has an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. This operator is actually essentially self-adjoint. The operator of below can be seen to have a compact inverse, meaning that the corresponding differential equation AF equals G is solved by some integral, therefore compact, operator G. The compact symmetric operator G then has a countable family of eigenvectors which are complete in L2. The same can then be said for A. Consider the complex Hilbert space L2, 0, 1, and the differential operator A equals minus D 2 D X 2 Display style A equals frac D carrot 2 DX carrot 2 with D O M A display style mathrm dom 
consisting of all complex valued infinitely differentiable functions f on 0, 1, satisfying the boundary conditions f 0 equals f 1 equals 0. Display style f 0 equals f 1 equals 0. Then integration by parts of the inner product shows that A is symmetric. The reader is invited to perform integration by parts twice and verify that the given boundary conditions for DOM a display style operator name DOM a ensure that the boundary terms in the integration by parts vanish. The eigenfunctions of A are the sinusoids f n x equals sin n pi x n equals 1 2 display style f underscore n x equals sin n pi x q quad n equals 1 2 l dots with the real eigenvalues n 2 pi 2 the well known orthogonality of the sine functions follows as a consequence of the property of being symmetric we consider generalizations of this operator below. Topic: <laughs> Self-adjoint operators. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Definition of a self-adjoint operator. Briefly, a densely defined linear operator A on a Hilbert space is self-adjoint if it equals its adjoint. That is to say, A is self-adjoint if 1, the domain of A coincides with the domain of the adjoint, and 2, the operator agrees with its adjoint on this common domain. We now elaborate on the above definition. Given a densely defined linear operator A on H, its adjoint A is defined as follows. The domain of a consists of vectors x in H such that y x a y display style y mapsto langle x a wrangle, which is a densely defined linear map, is a continuous linear functional. By continuity and density of the domain of A, it extends to a unique continuous linear functional on all of H. By the Riesz representation theorem for linear functionals, if x is in the domain of A, there is a unique vector z in H such that x a y equals z y y element of dom. Display style Langle x a wrangle equals Langle z y wrangle q quad foral y in operator name dom a. This vector z is defined to be a x. It can be shown that the dependence of z on x is linear. Notice that it is the denseness of the domain of the operator, along with the uniqueness part of Riesz representation, that ensures the adjoint operator is well defined. A result of Hellinger Terplitz type says that an operator having an everywhere defined bounded adjoint is bounded. The condition for a linear operator on a Hilbert space to be self adjoint is stronger than to be symmetric. Although this distinction is technical, it is very important. The spectral theorem applies only to operators that are self adjoint and not to operators that are merely symmetric. For an extensive discussion of the distinction, see Chapter 9 of Hall. 2013. For any densely defined operator on Hilbert space one can define its adjoint operator A. For a symmetric operator A, the domain of the operator A contains the domain of the operator A, and the restriction of the operator on the domain of A coincides with the operator A, i.e. A. In other words A is extension of A. For a self-adjoint operator A the domain of A is the same as the domain of A, and A equals a see also extensions of symmetric operators and unbounded operator equals topic essential self adjointness equals a symmetric operator a is always clusable that is the closure of the graph of a is the graph of an operator a symmetric operator A is said to be essentially self-adjoint if the closure of A is self-adjoint. 
Equivalently, A is essentially self-adjoint if it has a unique self-adjoint extension. In practical terms, having an essentially self-adjoint operator is almost as good as having a self-adjoint operator, since we merely need to take the closure to obtain self-adjoint operator. Equals. Topic: Geometric interpretation. Equals. There is a useful geometric way of looking at the adjoint of an operator on H as follows: We consider the graph G A of a defined by G A equals she A she she element of Dom I H H Display style operator name G A equals she a she she in operator name Dom a subset H O plus H theorem. Let J be the symplectic mapping H H H H J she Ata minus Ata she display style begin cases H O plus H to H O plus H operator name J sad face she Ata mapsto Ata she end cases then the graph of A is the orthogonal complement of J G A G A equals J G A equals X Y element of H H X Y minus a she she equals zero she element of Dom Display style operator name G A carrot asterisk equals operator name J operator name G A carrot perp equals X Y in H O plus H Langle X Y a she she Wrangle equals zero foral she in operator name Dom A A densely defined operator A is symmetric if and only if A where the subset notation A is understood to mean G A G A. An operator A is self adjoint if and only if A. Topic A, that is, if and only if G A G A Topic An example Consider the complex Hilbert space L two R, and the operator which multiplies a given function by X A F X equals x f x display style a f x equals x f x the domain of a is the space of all l2 functions f x display style f x for which x f x display style x f x is also square integrable then A is self-adjoint. On the other hand, A does not have any eigenfunctions. More precisely, A does not have any normalizable eigenvectors, that is, eigenvectors that are actually in the Hilbert space on which A is defined. As we will see later, self-adjoint operators have very important spectral properties. They are in fact multiplication operators on general measure spaces. Topic: The distinction between symmetric and self-adjoint operators. As has been discussed above, although the distinction between a symmetric operator and a self-adjoint or essentially self-adjoint operator is a subtle one, it is important since self-adjointness is the hypothesis in the spectral theorem. Here we discuss some concrete examples of the distinction, see the section below on extensions of symmetric operators for the general theory. Boundary conditions 
In the case where the Hilbert space is a space of functions on a bounded domain, these distinctions have to do with a familiar issue in quantum physics, one cannot define an operator, such as the momentum or Hamiltonian operator, on a bounded domain without specifying boundary conditions. In mathematical terms, choosing the boundary conditions amounts to choosing an appropriate domain for the operator. Consider, for example, the Hilbert space L 2 0 1 display style L caret 2 0 1 the space of square integrable functions on the interval 0 1 let us define a momentum operator on this space by the usual formula setting planck's constant equal to 1 a f equals minus i d f d x display style af equals i frac df dx we must now specify a domain for A, which amounts to choosing boundary conditions. If we choose DOM I equals smooth functions, display style operator name DOM I equals left text smooth functions right, then A is not symmetric because the boundary terms in the integration by parts do not vanish. If we choose DOM equals smooth functions f f 0 equals f 1 equals 0 display style operator name dom a equals left text smooth functions f f 0 equals f 1 equals 0 right then using integration by parts one can easily verify that a is symmetric this operator is not essentially self-adjoint, however, basically because we have specified too many boundary conditions on the domain of A, which makes the domain of the adjoint too big. This example is discussed also in the examples section below. Specifically, with the above choice of domain for A, the domain of the closure A C L display style a caret mathrm C L of A is Dom A C L equals functions F with two derivatives in L two F zero equals F one equals zero Display style operator name dom left a caret mathrm c l right equals left text functions f text with two derivatives in l caret two f zero equals f one equals zero right, whereas the domain of the adjoint a display style a caret asterisk of a is dom a equals functions f with two derivatives in L two display style operator name dom left a caret asterisk right equals left text functions f text with two derivatives in L caret two right. That is to say, the domain of the closure has the same boundary conditions as the domain of A itself, just a less stringent smoothness assumption. Meanwhile, since there are too many boundary conditions on A, there are too few actually none at all in this case for a display style a asterisk if we compute g a f display style langle g a f wrangle for f element of dom a display style f in operator name dom a using integration by parts then since f display style f vanishes at both ends of the interval no boundary conditions on g display style g are needed to cancel out the boundary terms in the integration by parts 
Thus, any sufficiently smooth function g display style g is in the domain of a display style a caret asterisk with a g equals minus i d g d x display style a caret asterisk g equals i d g d x since the domain of the closure and the domain of the adjoint do not agree, A is not essentially self-adjoint. After all, a general result says that the domain of the adjoint of A C L is the same as the domain of the adjoint of A. Thus, in this case, the domain of the adjoint of A C L Display style a carrot mathram cl is bigger than the domain of a c l display style a carrot mathram cl itself, showing that a c l display style a carrot mathram cl is not self-adjoint, which by definition means that a is not essentially self-adjoint. The problem with the preceding example is that we impose too many boundary conditions on the domain of A. A better choice of domain would be to use periodic boundary conditions. Dom I equals smooth functions f f zero equals f one. Display style operator name dom a equals text smooth functions f f zero equals f one. With this domain, A is essentially self-adjoint. In this case, we can understand the implications of the domain issues for the spectral theorem. If we use the first choice of domain with no boundary conditions, all functions f beta x equals e beta x display style f underscore beta x equals e caret beta x for beta element of c display style beta in math b c are eigenvectors with eigenvalues minus i beta display style i beta and so the spectrum is the whole complex plane. If we use the second choice of domain with Dirichlet boundary conditions, A has no eigenvectors at all. If we use the third choice of domain with periodic boundary conditions, we can find an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors for A, the functions f n x equals e 2 pi i n x display style f underscore n x equals e caret two pi i n x. Thus, in this case, finding a domain such that A is self-adjoint is a compromise. The domain has to be small enough so that A is symmetric, but large enough so that d A equals d A display style d A caret asterisk equals d A. Topic. Schrödinger operators with singular potentials A more subtle example of the distinction between symmetric and essentially self-adjoint operators comes from Schrödinger operators in quantum mechanics. If the potential energy is singular, particularly if the potential is unbounded below, the associated Schrödinger operator may fail to be essentially self-adjoint. In one dimension, for example, the operator H caret equals P two two M minus X four display style hat H equals frac P caret two two meters X caret four is not essentially self-adjoint on the space of smooth, rapidly decaying functions. 
In this case, the failure of essential self adjointness reflects a pathology in the underlying classical system, a classical particle with a minus x 4 display style x caret 4 potential escapes to infinity in finite time this operator does not have a unique self adjoint but it does admit self adjoint extensions obtained by specifying boundary conditions at infinity since h caret display style hat h is a real operator, it commutes with complex conjugation. Thus, the deficiency indices are automatically equal, which is the condition for having a self-adjoint extension. See the discussion of extensions of symmetric operators below. In this case, if we initially define h caret display style hat h on the space of smooth, rapidly decaying functions, the adjoint will be the same operator, i.e., given by the same formula, but on the largest possible domain, namely Dom H carrot equals twice differentiable functions F element of L two R minus two 2 m d 2 f d x 2 minus x 4 f x element of l 2 r Display style operator name dom left hat h caret asterisk right equals left text twice differentiable functions f in l caret two math b r left left frac h b a r caret two two meters frac d caret two f d x caret two x caret four f x right in l caret two math b r right right. It is then possible to show that h caret Display style hat h caret asterisk is not a symmetric operator, which certainly implies that h caret display style hat h is not essentially self-adjoint. Indeed, h caret display style hat h caret asterisk has eigenvectors with pure imaginary eigenvalues, which is impossible for a symmetric operator. This strange occurrence is possible because of a cancellation between the two terms in h caret display style hat h caret asterisk there are functions f display style f in the domain of h caret display style hat h caret asterisk for which neither d 2 F D X two display style D carrot two F D X carrot two nor X four F X display style X carrot four F X is separately in L two R display style L carrot two math B R but the combination of them occurring in h caret display style hat h caret asterisk is in l 2 r display style l caret 2 math b r this allows for h caret display style hat h caret asterisk to be non-symmetric even though both D two D X two Display style D carrot two DX carrot two and X four Display style X carrot four are symmetric operators. This sort of cancellation does not occur if we replace the repelling potential minus X four 
display style x caret 4 with the confining potential x 4 display style x caret 4 conditions for schrodinger operators to be self adjoint or essentially self adjoint can be found in various textbooks such as those by berezin and shuban hall and reed and simon listed in the references topic spectral theorem In the physics literature, the spectral theorem is often stated by saying that a self-adjoint operator has an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. Physicists are well aware, however, of the phenomenon of «continuous spectrum». Thus, when they speak of an «orthonormal basis», they mean either an orthonormal basis in the classic sense or some continuous analogue thereof. In the case of the momentum operator p equals Minus i d d x display style p equals i d dx. For example, physicists would say that the eigenvectors of the functions f p x equals e i p x. Display style f underscore p x equals e caret i p x, which are clearly not in the Hilbert space. L two r display style l caret two math b r. Physicists would say that the eigenvectors are non-normalizable. Physicists would then go on to say that these eigenvectors are orthonormal in a continuous sense, where the usual Kronecker delta delta i j display style delta underscore i j is replaced by a dirac delta function delta p minus p display style delta left p p right Although these statements may seem disconcerting to mathematicians, they can be made rigorous by use of the Fourier transform, which allows a general L 2 function to be expressed as a superposition, i.e., integral of the functions P i P x e i p x even though these functions are not in L two display style L caret two, the Fourier transform diagonalizes the momentum operator. That is, it converts it into the operator of multiplication by p display style p, where p display style p is the variable of the Fourier transform. The spectral theorem in general can be expressed similarly as the possibility of diagonalizing an operator by showing it is unitarily equivalent to a multiplication operator. Other versions of the spectral theorem are similarly intended to capture the idea that a self-adjoint operator can have eigenvectors that are not actually in the Hilbert space in question. Topic. Statement of the spectral theorem Partially defined operators A, B on Hilbert spaces H, K are unitarily equivalent if and only if there is a unitary transformation U, H, K such that U maps DOM are bijectively onto DOM B B U she equals U A she she element of dom a display style boo she equals u a she q quad foral she in operator name dom a a multiplication operator is defined as follows let x sigma mu be a countably additive measure space and f a real valued measurable function on x an operator t of the form t psi x equals F x psi x 
display style t psi x equals f x psi x whose domain is the space of psi for which the right hand side above is in l2 is called a multiplication operator one version of the spectral theorem can be stated as follows theorem any multiplication operator is a densely defined self adjoint operator any self adjoint operator is unitarily equivalent to a multiplication operator other version of the spectral theorem can be found in the spectral theorem article linked to above the spectral theorem for unbounded self adjoint operators can be proved by reduction to the spectral theorem for unitary hence bounded operators this reduction uses the Cayley transform for self-adjoint operators which is defined in the next section. We might note that if T is multiplication by F, then the spectrum of T is just the essential range of F. Functional calculus One important application of the spectral theorem is to define a functional calculus. That is to say, if h display style h is a function on the real line and t display style t is a self-adjoint operator, we wish to define the operator h t display style h t if t display style t has a true orthonormal basis of eigenvectors e j display style underscore j with eigenvalues lambda j display style lambda underscore j then h t display style h t is the operator with eigenvectors e j Display style underscore j and eigenvalues h lambda j display style h left lambda underscore j right. The goal of functional calculus is to extend this idea to the case where t display style t has continuous spectrum. Of particular importance in quantum physics is the case in which T display style T is the Hamiltonian operator H carrot display style hat H and H X equals E minus I T X display style H X equals E carrot I T X H B A R is an exponential. In this case, the functional calculus should allow us to define the operator u t equals h h caret equals e minus i t h caret Display style u t equals h left hat h right equals e caret frac it hat h h var, which is the operator defining the time evolution in quantum mechanics. Given the representation of t as the operator of multiplication by f, display style f, as guaranteed by the spectral theorem, it is easy to characterize the functional calculus. If h is a bounded real valued Borel function on R, then h t is the operator of multiplication by the composition h f h circ f. Topic: Resolution of the identity. It has been customary to introduce the following notation E T Lambda equals one minus infinity Lambda T Display style operator name E underscore T Lambda equals Math BF one underscore inf T Lambda T where one minus 
infinity lambda display style math bf 1 underscore inf d lambda is the characteristic function of the interval minus infinity lambda display style inf d lambda the family of projection operators ET lambda is called resolution of the identity for T. Moreover, the following Stieltjes integral representation for T can be proved. T equals minus infinity plus infinity lambda d e t lambda Display style t equals int underscore inf t caret plus inf t lambda d operator name e underscore t lambda. The definition of the operator integral above can be reduced to that of a scalar-valued Stieltjes integral using the weak operator topology. In more modern treatments, however, this representation is usually avoided, since most technical problems can be dealt with by the functional calculus. Topic. Formulation in the physics literature In physics, particularly in quantum mechanics, the spectral theorem is expressed in a way which combines the spectral theorem as stated above and the Borel functional calculus using Dirac notation as follows If H is self-adjoint and F is a Borel function F H equals D E Psi E F E Psi E Display style F H equals inter left psi underscore E wrangle F E Langle Psi underscore E right with H Psi E equals E Psi E Display style h left psi underscore e right wrangle equals e left psi underscore e right wrangle, where the integral runs over the whole spectrum of h. The notation suggests that h is diagonalized by the eigenvectors psi e. Such a notation is purely formal. One can see the similarity between Dirac's notation and the previous section. The resolution of the identity, sometimes called projection-valued measures, formally resembles the rank 1 projections psi e psi e display style left psi underscore e right wrangle left langle psi underscore e right. In the Dirac notation, projective measurements are described via eigenvalues and eigenstates, both purely formal objects. As one would expect, this does not survive passage to the resolution of the identity. In the latter formulation, measurements are described using the spectral measure of psi display style psi wrangle. If the system is prepared in psi display style psi wrangle prior to the measurement. Alternatively, if one would like to preserve the notion of eigenstates and make it rigorous, rather than merely formal, one can replace the state space by a suitable rigged Hilbert space. If f equals 1, the theorem is referred to as resolution of unity. I equals d e psi e psi e Display style i equals int left psi underscore e right wrangle left langle psi underscore e right. In the case h f equals h minus i gamma. Display style h underscore text f equals h i gamma is the sum of an Hermitian h and a skew Hermitian c skew Hermitian matrix operator. Minus i gamma display style i gamma one defines the biorthogonal basis set H f psi e equals e psi e 
Display style h underscore text f carrot asterisk left psi underscore e carrot asterisk right wrangle equals e carrot asterisk left psi underscore e carrot asterisk right wrangle, and write the spectral theorem as f h f equals d e psi e f E psi E display style f left h underscore text f right equals int de left psi underscore e right wrangle f e left langle psi underscore e carrot asterisk right. See feshbach fano partitioning method for the context where such operators appear in scattering theory. Topic. Extensions of symmetric operators The following question arises in several contexts, if an operator A on the Hilbert space H is symmetric, when does it have self-adjoint extensions? An operator that has a unique self-adjoint extension is said to be essentially self-adjoint. Equivalently, an operator is essentially self-adjoint if its closure, the operator whose graph is the closure of the graph of A, is self-adjoint. In general, a symmetric operator could have many self-adjoint extensions or none at all. Thus, we would like a classification of its self-adjoint extensions. The first basic criterion for essential self-adjointness is the following Theorem, if A is a symmetric operator on H, then A is essentially self-adjoint if and only if the range of the operators A minus I display style A I and A plus I display style A plus I a dense in H equivalently, A is essentially self-adjoint if and only if the operators A minus I display style a carrot asterisk I and A plus I display style a carrot asterisk plus I have trivial kernels. That is to say, A fails to be self-adjoint if and only if display style a caret asterisk has an eigenvector with eigenvalue i display style i or minus i display style i another way of looking at the issue is provided by the cayley transform of a self adjoint operator and the deficiency indices we should note here that it is often of technical convenience to deal with closed operators in the symmetric case, the closedness requirement poses no obstacles, since it is known that all symmetric operators are closable. Theorem. Suppose A is a symmetric operator. Then there is a unique partially defined linear operator W A ran A plus I ran A minus I Display style operator name W A operator name ran A plus I to operator name ran A I such that W A A X plus I X equals A X minus I X X element of Dom a display style operator name W A X plus I X equals X X Q quad X in operator name Dom a. Here, ran and Dom denote the image, in other words, range and the domain, respectively. W A is isometric on its domain. Moreover, the range of one minus W A is dense in H. Conversely, given any partially defined operator U which is isometric on its domain which is not necessarily closed and such that 1 minus U is dense, there is a unique operator S U S U ran 1 minus U ran 1 plus U 
Display style operator name S U operator name ran one U two operator name ran one plus U such that S U X minus U X equals I X plus U X X element of Dom U Display style operator name S U X U X equals I X plus U X Q quad X in operator name Dom U The operator S U is densely defined and symmetric. The mappings W and S are inverses of each other, the mapping W is called the Cayley transform. It associates a partially defined isometry to any symmetric densely defined operator. Note that the mappings W and S are monotone, this means that if B is a symmetric operator that extends the densely defined symmetric operator A, then W B extends W A, and similarly for S theorem. A necessary and sufficient condition for it to be self-adjoint is that its Cayley transform W A, be unitary, this immediately gives us a necessary and sufficient condition for it to have a self-adjoint extension, as follows, theorem. A necessary and sufficient condition for it to have a self-adjoint extension is that W A have a unitary extension. A partially defined isometric operator V on a Hilbert space H has a unique isometric extension to the norm closure of DOM V. A partially defined isometric operator with closed domain is called a partial isometry. Given a partial isometry V, the deficiency indices of V are defined as the dimension of the orthogonal complements of the domain and range, n plus V equals dim dom V n minus V equals dim rand V display style, begin, aligned, n underscore, plus V, and equals operator name, dim, operator name, dom V, carrot, perp, n underscore, V, and equals operator name, dim, operator name, rand V, carrot, perp, end, aligned theorem. A partial isometry V has a unitary extension if and only if the deficiency indices are identical. Moreover, V has a unique unitary extension if and only if the deficiency indices are both zero. We see that there is a bijection between symmetric extensions of an operator and isometric extensions of its Cayley transform. The symmetric extension is self-adjoint if and only if the corresponding isometric extension is unitary. A symmetric operator has a unique self-adjoint extension if and only if both its deficiency indices are zero. Such an operator is said to be essentially self-adjoint. Symmetric operators which are not essentially self-adjoint may still have a canonical self-adjoint extension. Such is the case for non-negative symmetric operators or more generally, operators which are bounded below. These operators always have a canonically defined Friedrichs extension and for these operators we can define a canonical functional calculus. Many operators that occur in analysis are bounded below such as the negative of the Laplacian operator, so the issue of essential adjointness for these operators is less critical. Topic self-adjoint extensions in quantum mechanics In quantum mechanics, observables correspond to self-adjoint operators. By Stone's theorem on one-parameter unitary groups, self-adjoint operators are precisely the infinitesimal generators of unitary groups of time evolution operators. However, many physical problems are formulated as a time evolution equation involving differential operators for which the Hamiltonian is only symmetric. In such cases, either the Hamiltonian is essentially self-adjoint, in which case the physical problem has unique solutions or one attempts to find self-adjoint extensions of the Hamiltonian corresponding to different types of boundary conditions or conditions at infinity. Example, the one-dimensional Schrödinger operator with the potential V x equals minus 1 plus x alpha display style V x equals 1 plus x caret alpha, defined initially on smooth compactly supported functions, is essentially self-adjoint, that is, has a self-adjoint closure, for O2. See Berezin and Schubin, pages 55 and 86, or section 9.10 in Hall. 
the failure of essential self adjointness for alpha greater than 2 display style alpha greater than 2 has a counterpart in the classical dynamics of a particle with potential v x display style v x the classical particle escapes to infinity in finite time example there is no self adjoint momentum operator p for a particle moving on a half line Nevertheless, the Hamiltonian p2 display style p caret 2 of a free particle on a half line has several self-adjoint extensions corresponding to different types of boundary conditions. Physically, these boundary conditions are related to reflections of the particle at the origin. See Reed and Simon, Volume 2. Topic: Von Neumann's formulas. Suppose A is symmetric densely defined. Then any symmetric extension of A is a restriction of A**. Indeed, a B and B symmetric yields B A** by applying the definition of DOM A Theorem. Suppose A is a densely defined symmetric operator. Let n plus or minus equals ran a plus or minus I display style n underscore pm equals operator name ran a pm i caret perp. Then n plus or minus equals ker a i display style n underscore pm equals operator name ker a caret asterisk mpi and dom a equals Dom a n plus n minus display style operator name dom left a caret asterisk right equals operator name dom left overline a right o plus n underscore plus o plus n underscore where the decomposition is orthogonal relative to the graph inner product of dom a asterisk she eta graph equals she eta plus a she a eta display style langle she eta wrangle underscore text graph equals langle she eta wrangle plus left langular carrot asterisk she a carrot asterisk eta right wrangle these are referred to as von Neumann's formulas in the Akiesa and Glasman reference. Topic Examples. Topic A symmetric operator that is not essentially self-adjoint. We first consider the Hilbert space L two zero one display style L caret two zero one and the differential operator d phi one i phi display style d phi mapsto frac one i phi defined on the space of continuously differentiable complex-valued functions on zero one satisfying the boundary conditions phi zero equals phi one equals zero. Display style phi zero equals phi one equals zero. Then d is a symmetric operator as can be shown by integration by parts. The spaces n plus n minus defined below are given respectively by the distributional solutions to the equation minus i u equals i u minus i u equals minus i u. Display style begin aligned u and equals u u and equals u end aligned, which are in L two zero one. One can show that each one of these solution spaces is one-dimensional, generated by the functions x e minus x and x x respectively. This shows that d is not essentially self-adjoint, but does have self-adjoint extensions. These self-adjoint extensions are parametrized by the space of unitary mappings n plus n minus, which in this case happens to be the unit circle t. In this case, the failure of essential self-adjointance is due to n incorrect choice of boundary conditions in the definition of the domain of d display style d since d display style d is a first order operator only one boundary condition is needed to ensure that d display style d is symmetric 
if we replace the boundary conditions given above by the single boundary condition phi 0 equals phi 1 display style phi 0 equals phi 1 then D would still be symmetric and would now, in fact, be essentially self-adjoint. This change of boundary conditions gives one particular essentially self-adjoint extension of D. Other essentially self-adjoint extensions come from imposing boundary conditions of the form phi 1 equals E I theta phi 0 Display style phi one equals e caret i theta phi zero. This simple example illustrates a general fact about self-adjoint extensions of symmetric differential operators P on an open set M. They are determined by the unitary maps between the eigenvalue spaces n plus or minus equals u element of L two M P dist U equals plus or minus I U display style n underscore PM equals left U in L carrot two M cheeky smiley face underscore operator name dist U equals PM U right where P D I S T is the distributional extension of P. Topic: Constant coefficient operators. We next give the example of differential operators with constant coefficients. Let p x equals alpha c alpha x alpha. Display style p left vec x right equals sum underscore alpha c underscore alpha x caret alpha be a polynomial on R n with real coefficients, where alpha ranges over a finite set of multi indices. Thus, alpha equals alpha one, alpha two, alpha n. Display style alpha equals alpha underscore one alpha underscore two L dots alpha underscore N and X alpha equals X one alpha one X two alpha two X N alpha N Display style x carrot alpha equals x underscore one carrot alpha underscore one x underscore two carrot alpha underscore two c d o t s x underscore n carrot alpha underscore n. We also use the notation d alpha equals one i alpha x one alpha one x two alpha two x n alpha n display style d carrot alpha equals frac one i carrot alpha partial underscore x underscore one carrot alpha underscore one partial underscore x underscore two carrot alpha underscore two c d o t s partial underscore x underscore n carrot alpha underscore n then the operator p d defined on the space of infinitely differentiable functions of compact support on R n by p d phi equals alpha c alpha d alpha phi display style p operator name d phi equals sum underscore alpha c underscore alpha operator name d caret alpha phi is essentially self adjoint on l2 rn theorem let P a polynomial function on R n with real coefficients, f the Fourier transform considered as a unitary map L2 R n L2 R n. 
then f asterisk p d f is essentially self-adjoint and its unique self-adjoint extension is the operator of multiplication by the function p. More generally, consider linear differential operators acting on infinitely differentiable complex-valued functions of compact support. If m is an open subset of Rn p phi x equals alpha a alpha x d alpha phi x display style p phi x equals sum underscore alpha or underscore alpha x left d caret alpha phi right x where alpha are not necessarily constant infinitely differentiable functions p is a linear operator c 0 infinity m c 0 infinity m display style c underscore 0 caret inf t m to c underscore 0 caret inf t m corresponding to p there is another differential operator the formal adjoint of p p f o R M Phi equals alpha D alpha a alpha Phi Display style P carrot, mathrum, asterisk form, phi equals sum underscore alpha D carrot, alpha left overline or underscore alpha phi right theorem. The adjoint p asterisk of p is a restriction of the distributional extension of the formal adjoint to an appropriate subspace of L two. Display style L caret two. Specifically, dom p equals u element of L two m p f O R M U element of L two M display style operator name dom p caret asterisk equals left U in L caret two M cheeky smiley face caret mathrum asterisk form U in L caret two M right topic. Spectral multiplicity theory The multiplication representation of a self-adjoint operator, though extremely useful, is not a canonical representation. This suggests that it is not easy to extract from this representation a criterion to determine when self-adjoint operators A and B are unitarily equivalent. The finest grained representation which we now discuss involves spectral multiplicity. This circle of results is called the Hahn-Hellinger theory of spectral multiplicity. Topic uniform multiplicity We first define uniform multiplicity. Definition. A self-adjoint operator A has uniform multiplicity n where n is such that 1 n omega if and only if A is unitarily equivalent to the operator m f of multiplication by the function f lambda equals lambda on L mu 2 r h n equals psi r h n psi measurable and r psi t 2 d mu t infinity display style L underscore mu caret 2 left math b f r math b f h underscore n right equals left psi math b f r 2 math b f H underscore N psi M box measurable and int underscore math BF R psi T carrot two D mu T where H N is a Hilbert space of dimension N. The domain of MF consists of vector valued functions psi on R such that R lambda two psi lambda two D mu lambda infinity. Display style int underscore math bf r lambda carrot two psi lambda carrot two d mu lambda non negative countably additive measures mu mu are mutually singular if and only if they are supported on disjoint Borel sets. Theorem. 
Let A be a self-adjoint operator on a separable Hilbert space H then there is an omega sequence of countably additive finite measures on R some of which may be identically zero mu 1 omega display style left mu underscore L right underscore 1 leq L leq omega such that the measures are pairwise singular and A is unitarily equivalent to the operator of multiplication by the function f lambda equals lambda on 1 omega L mu 2 R H Display style big O plus underscore one leq l leq omega l underscore mu underscore l carrot two left math bf r math bf h underscore l right. This representation is unique in the following sense: for any two such representations of the same a, the corresponding measures are equivalent in the sense that they have the same sets of measure zero. Topic: Direct integrals. The spectral multiplicity theorem can be reformulated using the language of direct integrals of Hilbert spaces. Theorem: Any self-adjoint operator on a separable Hilbert space is unitarily equivalent to multiplication by the function lambda lambda on R H lambda d mu lambda display style int underscore math bf r caret o plus h underscore lambda d mu lambda unlike the multiplication operator version of the spectral theorem the direct integral version is unique in the sense that the measure equivalence class of mu or equivalently its sets of measure 0 is uniquely determined and the measurable function lambda d i m H lambda display style lambda mapsto mathrum dim h underscore lambda is determined almost everywhere with respect to mu. The function lambda dim h lambda display style lambda mapsto operator name dim left h underscore lambda right is the spectral multiplicity function of the operator. We may now state the classification result for self-adjoint operators. Two self-adjoint operators are unitarily equivalent if and only if one, the spectra agree as sets, two, the measures appearing in their direct integral representations have the same sets of measure zero, and three, the spectral multiplicity functions agree almost everywhere with respect to the measure in the direct integral. Topic. Example, structure of the Laplacian The Laplacian on Rn is the operator Delta equals I equals one N X I two Display style delta equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N partial underscore X underscore I carrot two as remarked above, the Laplacian is diagonalized by the Fourier transform. Actually it is more natural to consider the negative of the Laplacian minus delta since as an operator it is non-negative, see elliptic operator. Theorem. If n equals 1, then minus delta has uniform multiplicity mult equals 2 display style text mult equals 2 Otherwise minus delta has uniform multiplicity mult equals omega display style text mult equals omega Moreover the measure mu mult may be taken to be Lebesgue measure on zero infinity topic <laughs> pure point spectrum A self-adjoint operator on H has pure point spectrum if and only if H has an orthonormal basis a i element of i consisting of eigenvectors for a. Example: the Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator has a quadratic potential v that is minus delta plus x two display style delta plus x caret two 
This Hamiltonian has pure point spectrum, this is typical for bound state Hamiltonians in quantum mechanics. As was pointed out in a previous example, a sufficient condition that an unbounded symmetric operator has eigenvectors which form a Hilbert space basis is that it has a compact inverse. See also Compact operator on Hilbert space Theoretical and experimental justification for the Schrödinger equation Unbounded operator. Equals equals citations. <laughs>